Planetary Resources, our mission is to mine near-Earth asteroids for precious platinum group metals and rocket fuels in order to expand the human economy on Earth and beyond. Now, everyone can appreciate the value of platinum. So while platinum is valuable, it can be far more difficult to appreciate the value of fuels in space. As president here at Planetary Resources, I'm often asked, what exactly is the market for fuels in space? And what can we get from asteroids to help it thrive? Now, it's true that a future of space hotels, space-based power plants, off-planet colonies, and all that wonderful stuff is where we're headed. But you may be surprised to learn that the business of mining asteroids for fuels is built upon the present-day space economy's industrial needs. You see, in addition to platinum, the asteroids on our prime target list are abundant in the elements hydrogen and oxygen, stored as hydrated minerals, or even simple water ice, H2O. Water is useful for keeping astronauts hydrated, of course, but hydrogen and oxygen are also the elemental ingredients in grade A space shuttle quality rocket fuel. Water, in fact, powered all 135 NASA shuttle missions. Water got the Hubble Space Telescope into space. And water will help our space economy thrive now and into the future. And scientists know today that certain types of asteroids are full of the stuff. So what if we could source these materials from space? The equation would change dramatically. Currently, rocket fuel in space is more valuable, pound for pound, than gold here on Earth. And that's because of how valuable that fuel is to satellite operators who will pay as much as $50 million per ton for the fuel that they use to maneuver spacecraft in geostationary orbit. That's a lot of money and an indicator of the type of market potential space can provide once we access valuable resources in space for space. So let's run through the three reasons why the market for fuel in space exists today and how that market will grow to be a cornerstone of our economy as it continues to expand into space. Reason number one, there is a huge need for fuel in space now. There are nearly 400 active satellites today that rely on fuel to keep them in their assigned Earth-orbiting parking spots. With fuel in space costing more than pure gold on Earth, each satellite operator pays up to $50 million per ton for that fuel. That's $180,000 per gallon. And if you've ever watched football on DirecTV or Dish Network, listen to music on Sirius XM radio, surf the web on a service like HughesNet, follow directions using GPS, or looked at weather or satellite maps, then you've been a customer helping to pay for that fuel. But these money-making and expensive satellites have a shelf life because they lack a source of fuel to keep them going. Now imagine if someone, say us here at Planetary Resources, could provide fuel for these satellites for a fraction of the current cost. These satellite operators would want to buy that fuel and use it to keep their satellites making millions upon millions each year for many years to come. Now, Let's do some math. Each of these 400 satellites makes about $50 million per year to cover the cost of building it, launching it, and operating it. That's a $20 billion market with a B for the companies that can provide a low-cost fuel alternative. This is an economic exothermic reaction waiting to be ignited, and Planetary Resources aims to do just that with the resources that are available on asteroids. Reason number two, the current $20 billion market is nothing to laugh at. But even this large market pales in comparison to the untold growth potential enabled by cheap access to fuels in space. In a solar system where fuel from asteroids is available for a hundredth or even a thousandth of current costs, we would see an economic expansion like never before in human history. This economic engine starts with our ARCID prospecting spacecraft. It starts with the first kilogram of fuel returned to Earth orbit and could reach one million tons per year in space in just 35 years. What would that growth look like? If we look to the history of aviation, in the 35 years from 1905 to 1940, aviation fuel consumption went from zero to a million tons because of the growth of commercial and government aviation. This type of trend is what we expect in space, but with infinite growth potential, where the sky is literally no longer the limit. And we're not alone in thinking this. Governments and industry are already pouring millions into developing these gas stations in space. For instance, back in 2007, DARPA demonstrated that satellites could be refueled autonomously. And in 2011, NASA funded aerospace giants like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, 
and Ball Aerospace to explore the development of liquid oxygen and hydrogen gas stations in space. Also in 2011, Intelsat was willing to pay MDA $280 million to refuel just five of its 50 telecommunications satellites. And last year, on the International Space Station, NASA demonstrated that for the very first time, they could refuel satellites that had never been designed to be refueled. Boeing, MDA, ATK, and a host of other aerospace companies are waiting in the wings to deploy these fuel depots into orbit. And while no satellites are yet refueled in space today, a cheap and abundant source of fuel will motivate satellite operators and providers alike to transition to the profitable new standard. In short, deliver asteroid water to Earth orbit, and the rest is history. Reason number three, water is fuel, but it is also shelter and sustenance for humans in space. Of course, we can drink it, we can breathe the oxygen, and we can use hydroponics to grow plants in zero gravity. It turns out that water is also a natural radiation shield beyond Earth. Radiation exposure has long been a concern for human travel in deep space. Just like water protects us from nuclear waste here on Earth, one single cubic meter of water can block almost all forms of radiation in space, allowing you to travel to Mars worry-free. Water and its use as rocket fuel is the key to unlocking the space economy, and the road to harvesting precious metal in space is paved with water. Rocket fuel from asteroids will make it easier to harvest, refine, and transport platinum back to Earth. Thus, water is a stepping stone to recovering even more useful materials in space. So with that, join us in our pursuit of harvesting these precious resources from space to fuel growth on Earth and beyond. So how would you use water in space? We'd like to know. Post your answer to the comments below or in social media with the hashtag FuelSpace. We'll take the most creative answers and share them here on the blog. Thanks for listening.